Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Body, Mr. Body is my name, and welcome to my home, Body Manor. Of tonight's event, I am the planner. This fun and folly known as a game. Here inside a box, a deck of cards, a pair of dice to toss. The premise of the game is simple. Kill me with one weapon, with one room. Now you won't rest easily until I rest permanently. Oh, the immeasurable joy of my doom. Find six rooms inside, a place to hide, a place to play the game. Murder is its name, you choose the cards, you play it hard, but only one can win. Murder is the bill of fare, and you'll see motive everywhere, so let the game begin. Six weapons pass from hand to hand with passion. Six suspects from square one are on the run. Let's meet them now and hear the tales they fashion. Be cautious, from here it's all a one for murder one. I am Mrs. Peacock. traveled and well preserved. I'm the rose of the Peacock family and chairperson of Peacock Enterprises, a position I acquired with the death of my first husband, Anthony. My second husband, Neville, gave me an authentic Renoir. Vincenzo, my third, my villa in Capri. My fourth gave me a 10 carat diamond ring. I've forgotten my fifth completely. He gave me nothing. I'm happy to say that I'm a newlywed again. Mr. Body recently became my sis. I have wealth, I have power. I have Ivana Trump's plastic surgeon. If I'm the one they choose to be the killer, poor darling, that means you're my six to die. The promise me tonight will be a thriller. It will, but someone to be my alibi. I am Professor Plum, B-A-M-A-P-H-D, that's me. I'm an author by trade, an intellect by birth, and an American by choice. <laughs> you see, I was born in London, raised in New York, attended Oxford, and years later became part of the British think tank in the States. It was in Washington I met Mr. Body. He was a lobbyist for the oil industry. He asked me to ghostwrite a book for him about the government's involvement in the oil industry for a handsome fee. Indeed, I agreed. As Somerset Mom said, money is like a sixth sense. You can't make use of the other five without it. <laughs> to mastermind a crime is quite fulfilling. To execute was never my strong suit. The mastermind will always get a billing. Body plainly dressed to move. Till the deed is done, I came for everyone. Murder is the bill of fare, and you see motive everywhere, so only one can win. One can win. Scarlet. I'm an actress. Well, a singer. Oh, more like a performer. Oh, fiddle dee dee, I'll just do it all. Oh, so that's what my men friends tell me. Now, no one knows this, but I first met Mr. Body while I was performing in Las Vegas. I opened for a dog juggling act which played every Tuesday at 3 a.m. at Billy's Lone Star Bar Grill and Casino. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Mr. Body was in Vegas on business. 
He saw my act, loved it, and asked me back for an encore in his hotel room. Now you know me, I do love an audience. Last time we played the game, I had to shoot you. The trigger jammed, I nearly missed my cue. Colonel Mustard here. I've stormed bunkers, pillaged barricades, and triumphed in war. Not with might, but with imagination. You see, this soldier never had the opportunity to serve in the armed forces because of legislation drafted by Senator Body, Mr. Body's father. It bans from the military any person who has the disease which causes people to mistake humans for inanimate objects. Non-identifiositis. <laughs> people live quite normally with the ailments until they're excited and their blood pressure increases. <laughs> then your neighbor becomes a Volkswagen, your son a toaster. You get the idea. Shortly after the bill was passed, Senator Body mysteriously died. Now Mr. Body calls me dad. Do you recall the last time that I killed you? I beat you silly with a candlestick. As I recall, you hit me with a lead pipe. Oh, yes, that's right. Perhaps tonight I'll try my new rope trick. My name is Mrs. White. I hate Sir Mrs. Park, but that's what I'm called by Mr. Body, who I lives with, as I'm his housekeeper. Well, actually, I'm his cook and his housekeeper, but he don't pay me enough to be called both. <laughs> so I just says I'm his housekeeper. I, I didn't mean to say as I lives with him, because I do got me own room, me own teeny tiny room in the basement where I sleeps on a thin, thin, thin mattress on a cot what ain't fit for prisoners in a jail cell. And the food, I get scraps, leftovers, tasteless, grisly stuff what the dog won't even eat. And I work se se seven days a week, seven long, Odd days with no rest for me weary bones, me weary muscles, me weary hands, feet, eyes, nose, air. God, I need a drink. <laughs> In mysteries, they all blame the maid or butler. But we don't have a butler here to blame. Oh, well. If the coppers come a-hunting for me, I'm ready. A jailhouse full of blokes for me to tame. Yes! How you doing? Green's the name. Money's my game. I'm the sultan of the stock market, king of commodities, a real entrepreneur. I got me a national chain of beauty salons called Teasing Your Blues Away. I own me the world's largest discount airline called Pennies in Heaven. And my most recent venture is a joint project with Mr. Body here, specializing in the restoration of ancient monuments called Colossal Nips and Tucks. Our most recent project is the Great Pyramids. We're gonna protect them from the element by covering them with vinyl siding. What a concept. Sandstone colored siding that blends right into the stone so you don't even know it's there. I tell you, I'm a genius. Yes, six weapons pass from hand to hand with passion. Success, six months, we're one, we're on the run. Be cautious. 
intrepid, conniving, contriving, seductive, elusive. So now we play our little game of murder. Our little game of Try your best and play the game to win. No matter if you land on top or bottom, you play it. And now it's time to play the game again. Yes! The game has now begun. Success is on the run. From here it's all or none for murder one. Tonight we won't save the world from ruin. We won't get a Nobel Prize. We won't win lottery jackpots. We will encounter some crackpots. Loony antics and clues to scrutinize. Crackpots. You hear that? It's calling us crackpots. Well, take a look around. You don't see sane people living in a two-dimensional world with yellow squares and paint-by-number rooms. Ladies and gentlemen, you will determine the conclusion of the game. The suspect, room, and weapon are essential. And you'll do this by selecting three cards from three decks, putting them in this envelope over here marked confidential. There are six options in each of three categories. Six, six, six. Hmm. Very interesting. There are 216 potential finales, but on only one is our game resting. Here we go again. The slap of the cards. The crash of the die. The sticky fingers grasping me. How the strong fingers grasping me. You always get the strong fingers. Uh, How come I never get the strong fingers? Excuse, 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 excuse me. Hey, hey, excuse me. I was talking here. OK. The first deck of cards represents the names of the suspects. And they are Mrs. Peacock. Mr. Green, Miss Scarlet, Colonel Mustard, Professor Plum, and Mrs. White. Now, before we started tonight, we recruited three volunteers, each to select a card. I ask you now to take the stage. I ask with humblest regard. Do so, I want you to hold the card up against your chest so no one can see, okay? There you go, please select the murderer. No peeking. Now, the second deck of cards represents the rooms in Body Manor where the murder might take place. And they are the kitchen, the ballroom, the lounge, the billiard room, the conservatory, the study. Okay, young lady, you ready to pick our our room. Let's shuffle them a little bit here. Okay, no one to see. Ready? Here we go. Tight against the chest. There we go. Okay, the third deck of cards represents the murder weapon that might be used. And they are the candlestick, the rope, the lead pipe, the revolver, the knife, 
the wrench. And we're going to shuffle these cards. Please select the murder weapon, sir. Anyone will do. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a round of applause. Thank you. No, you cannot. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good try. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in the envelope is the key to our destiny because in it lies the answer to the mystery. We find ourselves in an interesting place. The answer is chosen before we begin. What then is the objective from a player's perspective to solve the mystery and ultimately win? Your goal is to find out and determine what's in the envelope. Who done it with what weapon in what room? You'll arrive at this conclusion by deducing the solution from clues I will give you once we resume. There'll be two rounds of clues to assist you. Before my death, round one. <laughs> After, round two. Participation in the game is purely by choice. But if you should decide to play, please use the forms you received. Now, document the information I reveal with each clue and eliminate items with no value perceived. Thus you'll find where, how, and who. Now, the house lights will assist you in your endeavor. So when they report, please heed and write with pleasure. Now, we'll be anxious to know at the end of the game if your answer and ours is one and the same. So now we start our journey to this end. To all suspicious doing, diligently attend. Now, we start, round one starts in the kitchen. With shrieks of woe from a disgruntled worker, less friend than foe. <laughs> Make sure the roast is succulent and tender, he says. Make sure the salad is gently tossed. Oh, I'd like to burn his bloody roast and rip his salad apart. I'd like to... Oh, Mrs. White, what are you doing? Tenderizing the roast. <laughs> With a lead pipe? Uh-huh. Mrs. White. Oh. I want dinner prepared according to my specifications. Mr. Body, wait. You and me's got to have a talk about my position. Mrs. White, you are my chief domestic. There is nothing else to discuss. Me wages and the raise what I ain't never had. Are you forgetting that I paid the bail required by the court to free your son, Nigel? And I'm ever so grateful, <laughs> sir. Nigel would still be in a court, or sorry, in a jail, if waiting a, a trial if it weren't for my generous offering. More than generous, sir, more than generous. <laughs> but working all these long hours to pay you back is taking its toll. My body feels like I've just had a marathon night with a troop of blokes from the Royal Mrs. Navy. Mrs. White! <laughs> yeah, at least a night with sailors would have put a smile on my face. <laughs> Mrs. White, I want dinner ready in an hour. You are to inform my guests when dinner is to be served, and after serving it, I expect you to, to report to your chamber until such time as I summoned you. Is that understood? 
Aye, aye, sir. I knew she'd see things my way. Him? He is a bloody not minute yarn, he is. What I need is a new position with a respectful employer. Unfortunately, at my age, there ain't many offers. <laughs> Your life is a bowl of cherries when all the pieces fit. But when you're scrambling to survive, life is a bowl of pits. I'm everybody's doormat to wipe their feet upon. Mr. Body rules me like he runs me from dusk till dawn. His carrots and his beans must be new veil cuisine. I hate to cook that kind of stuff. And for a part and shot, the pot roast went a pot. Two arms and legs just ain't enough. Me life ain't a bowl of cherries. None of the pieces fit. I'm always scrambling to survive. Life is a bowl of pits. But destiny served me leftovers instead of an elegant meal. It could have been lobsters and champagne, mink coat and an automobile. But I married beneath me station. The butcher was who knocked me up. And we had a son. Our son was a bomb. It cost me the best of my life. <clears throat> As Mr. Body Servant, I'm very much maligned. He sure ain't much to sing about, but good work is hard to find. Now he don't even notice when everything runs swell. He'll treat me like I'm someone when it freezes up in hell. He's got no gratitude. He's got me all unglued. I fear I'll stab instead of slice. I'll hack instead of dice. I'll bludgeon the beast too. A main course worth the weight. Me master on a plate. Chop this, trim the fat. Carve this in nothing flat. Mince this, toss that. But life is a bowl of cherries when all the pieces fit. I'm dreaming and I'm scheming that one day I'll arrive. I'm Always scrambling to survive, and what I says is true. Life on the whole, life is a ball of peace. Clue number one the knife in the kitchen was Mrs. White, who flailed the gleaming blade with might. She handled the pipe quite adroitly, too. None of these weapons is a clue for you. Now we go to the billiard room where business runs awry and wheeling and dealing can't conceal a lie. Six ball, corner pocket. Good evening, Mr. Green. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> What's up? This room is a little dark, wouldn't you say, even for you? Yeah, six of one, half a pound of another. Oh. So, uh, you up for a game? Uh, no, thank you. Oh, come on. 
I'm already involved in the game. Suit yourself. So tell me, have you received the Egyptian check for colossal nips and tucks? Nah, not yet. But you know what? The government, they loved our proposal. And they said that they'd be cutting the check soon, real soon. You're lying. No, really. They said we'd get the deposit just as soon as we took care of a few loose ends and got some things Mr. sorted Green, out. Mr. Green, I spoke to Rabdul Raftu Abchek just yesterday. And he tells me the check has been delivered to you. And further investigation tells me that your personal account is now half a million dollars fatter than it was two days ago. Oh, that was for my Aunt Peoria. It was a little thank you for being such a model nephew. Mr. Green. No, really. Poor thing. She, she died. And, uh, and I used to go out to help her out. She was, she was confined to a wheelchair. She, she was crazy. She had a removable glass eye. So I used to go around and wheel her around the living room so she could play marbles with it. Mr. Green, I want the correct amount deposited in our, uh, on our account immediately. Listen, bud, now you're walking on thin water here. Failure to do so will result in a lawsuit being brought against you personally. Go ahead, sue me. You got nothing. It's like looking for a needle in a backpack. Clue number two, exhibited in that telling scene. Candlestick, billiard room, and Mr. Green. None of these are worth remembering when you begin your conjecturing. We now we go to the ballroom where a reunion takes place. Here, there is a dubious past to embrace. Strange place to find you in the ballroom alone. Colonel Mustard. How did you know? Oh, that unquestionable tone of adolescence. Are you a guest here for the weekend? No, just here for the evening. A stopover on my way to a very important affair. Oh, well, are you going to an engagement for Grey Poupon or French's Golden? <laughs> <laughs> my dear, you haven't changed a bit. You're still that. Feisty woman I once adored. Oh, you and me. Oh, that was husbands ago. Ooh. Remember when we were passionate friends? Mm, true allies. Say, let's play like we did that first night in Monaco. Let's play my favorite. Not Custer's last stand. He never stands very long. No, the storming of Normandy. Oh, send in the troops. Ted Hutt. Europe, 1939. Hitler unleashes his wrath. Left foot, Czechoslovakia. Right foot, Poland. Left hand, Denmark. Left hand, Norway. Right foot, Holland. Right hand, Belgium. Right foot, France. D-Day, Brigade. Thrust, artillery. Explodes. Advance. Charge. Victory! Oh. oh! Colonel, what is it? My back. <laughs> My back is stuck. What? My plastic vertebrae are jammed. Oh! Uh, plastic vertebrae? War wound. Oh! Uh, oh. Oh. oh! Oh, Colonel! Oh. Oh, what should I do? Oh! Oh, jeez. Stand on my toes, take my hands, and pull. Oh, okay. Oh! Ow! Oh! Oh! oh. oh. Colonel, I can't get you up! Oh, you most certainly can. <sighs> on the count of three. One, two, three. Oh! 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 oh. Uh, now what? Now pull. Pull what? <laughs> pull my shoulders. Pull my shoulders oh. and my back will straighten. <gasps> okay, here goes. Oh! Oh! Colonel, what is this? Oh, well, it's 
It's a revolver. Oh, I know that, but why is it on your person? Oh, old military habits. <laughs> Got to be prepared. Got to have your pistol loaded and ready to fire. <laughs> the enemy is everywhere. Oh, Colonel, I am no enemy. Colonel Mustard, I want you off the premises immediately. You don't understand. I don't understand. I was just kissing a rake. I want you out. Need I remind you that when your mother, my wife, my mother, your, died, I became owner of this manor? And it's because of my generosity that allows you to take up residence? My mother may have left you body manor, but she did not leave you my wife. Your wife? Where's your wife? Listen, you better put that rake away. That thing has sharp teeth. <laughs> and I'll deal with you later. Good night. Well, I'm going to the lounge for a cocktail and then to the conservatory for a moment alone with the plants. Clue number three, revolver ballroom, mustard peacock. Could they be the key to the mystery lock? Parent and spouse, both savvy and wise, Choose neither of these, I strongly advise. Revolver, ballroom, weapon, and space. Do neither of these help strengthen our case? Now we go to the lounge where more motive is forming in tandem with some very sly brainstorming. going to add a little vodka and then uh, yeah dash of the old gin <laughs> and then a big splash of beer to mix it all together <laughs> hey that's some cocktail you got going there would you like one maybe something a little less complicated like a glass of water Oh, none bottled. And the water pipe in here is broken. Well, maybe a little glass of wine, then. Who? Oh, in the cellar? Well, Mr. Body always has a decent bottle of wine lying around. That ain't no bottle of wine. Oh, of that. A wrench and a lead pipe. Plumbing repairs, obviously. Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah. Vine de Pays. Oh. Mm. It's Vin de Pays. It's French country wine. Hey, you're pretty good. So tell me, where'd you learn all that French, Scarletta? How did you know my name? Man, the last time I saw you, you were belting out Sinatra tunes in Vegas. I don't know you. Sure, you won the Miss Nuclear Waste beauty pageant. <laughs> now everybody knows that. Because I paid off the judges. Squeegee? Squeegee sends you a loony in a deflasher. <sighs> Stomach. The 
your long hair, the 10 pounds of gold chain around your neck. Hey, if you want to be a successful businessman, man, you need a certain look, a certain sound. Now I'm Mr. Green, jack of all shades. <laughs> what about you? I am a refined lady now, Miss Scarlet. Listen, baby, a leopard don't change her D's, those, and them's. Oh, squeegee, you don't know. I've changed. I hated that way of life. Yeah, you know, as I recall, you didn't have it too bad. Nice apartment, nice car, nice company. Yeah, things were good. Until you left. Why'd you hey. split? A guy in a, can, can't hang around when there's two business partners. One who happens to be his best girl itches up and leaves him in the dust. Well, I didn't know what Mr. Body was up to. Really, I didn't. He only put the make on me to get access to the accounts. And then he drained them, leaving me and our bank account penniless. Yeah? So what are you doing here? So what are you doing here? I'm here to right the wrong. His wrong? His wrong. You with me? You? Me? How? It was very selfish when he executed his intention. Making us the object of his dangerous invention. But we lost nonetheless. Perhaps we must address a little retribution. Methods, means, and execution are the strategies that count a lot. Efficiency will guarantee we won't get caught, but we lost nonetheless. nonetheless. Perhaps we must address a little retribution. Everyday devices have enterprise uses when they're in the right hands, but for the wrong reasons, delightfully delicious. These dangerous abuses when they're in the right hands, but for the Be good enough to fight him Just as long as I'm with you Any grizzly gadget would most definitely do We could whip him Yeah, with an egg beater Yeah, or maybe we could whack him Who with a weed eater Oh yeah, we could string him up, string him up I got it with a telephone cord yeah. We could flatten him with an ironing board Devices have enterprise and uses when they're in the right hands. But for the wrong reasons, delightfully delicious. These dangerous abuses when they're in the right hands. But for the wrong reasons, if we were to really do it, any household item would be good enough to fight him. Just as long as I'm with you, any grizzly gadget would most definitely do. Woo! Strangulate, obliterate, we liquidate the opposition. Evaluate, exterminate, we orchestrate retaliation. But we lost nonetheless, perhaps we must address a little retribution. We could perforate him. Yeah, with a silver ice pick. We could crack him. <laughs> On the head, with a hockey stick. <laughs> we could roll him. We could stuff him. Ooh, in a tube. We could thrash him with a monkey wrench. Everyday, everyday I devices, very enterprising, enterprising uses. When they're in the hands of anyone who knows how best to use them. If we really were to do it, then in a household item would be good enough to fight. And in devices have enterprising uses when they're in the right hands, but for the wrong reasons, delightfully delicious. These dangerous abuses when they're in the right hands, but for the wrong reasons. If we were to, to really do it, do it any household item would be good enough to fight him. Just as long as I'm with you, any grizzly gadget with you would 
most definitely Number four, Wrench Pipe Lounge, Scarlet and Green. In our conclusion or any foreseen, consider none of the weapons here. Consider none of the suspects here. The lounge, well, future clues will reveal if this is the scene of the deadly ordeal. Now we go to the study where a fuss is made between one under stress and one underpaid. There you have it, a perfect Archaean knot. Now if I pull here, I have a noose, a brilliant noose. Hm. Oi, that's me clothesline. You've gone and cut it to bits. Not to worry, I shall replace it. Oh, you bet your sweet bottom you shall. You will. I will what? You will replace it. Oh, I ain't replacing it. You're the one what's made a bloody mess of it. Proper English. You will replace it. I will not. Oh. You're the one what's bloody ruined it. It's not you shall. It's you will. Go ahead. Try and confuse me so I forget about the bloody rope and don't make you pay for it. You highfalutin types are all the same. You're a sly one, you are. Not as sly as your boss. You talking about Mr. B? <laughs> the eighth swindler himself. Ah, you got some dirt on him, ain't ya? Dirt is a substance found on the face of the earth, and in your case, underneath your fingernails. <laughs> Blimey. Yes, I do have some information about Mr. Body. Well, do tell. I don't know if I can trust you, Mrs. White. You tell me, or you'll be oh. sorry. You will. Very good, Mrs. White. First person singular and plural, you shall. Second and third person singular and plural, you will. You sound like a bloody school teacher. <laughs> tell, tell. <laughs> As a businessman, <coughs> Mr. Body intentionally acts to drive down the stock prices of certain oil companies, making them bankrupt. <coughs> he then bought them at disturbingly low prices and then sold them years later for extensive profit. So what's wrong with that? It's the American way, isn't it? <laughs> what's wrong with that is that the beneficiaries of corporate donations like educational institutions, they suffer, they suffer badly. So what's it to you? I lost out. Yeah. You in business? Um, yes, business. Uh, um, one of the companies he uh, bought then later sold was my family business in um, <laughs> Springfield, Massachusetts. What's the name of the business? Um, the P-T-A. P-T-A? Yes, P-T-A... O? Plum Transatlantic Oil. Oil in Massachusetts. Mm. Yes. Well, hmm, if that's the case, looks like you and me's got something in common. Oh, your family was in oil too? Yeah. <laughs> Me dad had a fish and chip shop in the East End. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, listen, after what Mr. B's done to you, how come you helping him with his book? The dignity lost to greed, I shall regain with proximity to the perpetrator. He'll pay with much more than the author of Vanty owes me. <sighs> You're so poetic. Oh, I do likes me a sensitive bloke. <laughs> oh, manly on the outside. Mm -hmm. Soft and squishy on the inside. <laughs> Say. I get so off, off work after dinner. Um, how come you and I <laughs> go?
goes for a moonlight stroll, <laughs> get to know each other a little better. <laughs> I think I know all there is to know about you, Mrs. White. <laughs> yeah, I guess I do tend to wear my personality on my sleeve, don't I? <laughs> More like all over your apron. I only came by to give you this sheet music. Uh, beat, beat, beat Huvin's Fifth Symphony. Beethoven, give me that. Well, you don't look very musical. You don't look very tidy. Dinner will be ready shortly. Yes, dinner. Clue number five, Plum and White in the study with the rope. Do any of these offer us any hope? Two of these four in the answer exists. But maybe there's an unexpected twist. To the conservatory we go now. Here there's a saga of vow after vow. My dear, it is imperative that we continue our conversation that we started earlier. I don't like your tone. And I don't like your reckless escapades. I have an insatiable spirit. Let me warn you, my dear, that I will not tolerate such displays of frivolous abandon. And let me warn you, my dear, that you may not have to. Disparage my history of marriage has been matrimonial strife. A woman in my prime. I married old money, so old it's not funny. Forget about passion, how very old fashioned. My first one then dropped dead. Insanity. The judge and I then wed. The gossip distressed me, but they couldn't arrest me the night my poor judgey dropped dead. The third one was a shrink. A real lady killer, his death was a thriller. I get sentimental, it was ruled accidental. The inquest was routine. It placed me at the scene. Twice a widow. They defamed me. Thrice a widow. shrink on to number four my lawyer was a charm but he squandered my assets and left me some bad debts then suddenly he bought the farm my fifth one made no sense 
The romance was fleeting, then I caught him cheating. You can ask any jury, a scorned woman's fury is grounds for self-defense. My fifth is now past tense. Number six, let us consider the conservatory, where Peacock's tale was every man's story. It certainly could house the deadly deed, but the cards have not given us that exact lead. Now we waltz so my friends will know. I have no qualm with my potential foe. Murder is fated, not by chance, and is now set in motion with a dance. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope, you've, I hope you've enjoyed your dinner and that you're pleasantly satiated. I've invited you all here, including Mrs. White, to invite, me, to invite you here for an after-dinner cordial because you're a collection of varied personalities with one single objective, my demise. Yes, revenge, diversion, pleasure, pain. Whatever your motivation, each of you wants me dead. Dead, dead, dead. Don't look so sad. I live to be killed. <laughs> I want you to know that I will cooperate fully so that all of your individual needs can be met. What you must do is plan your strategy wisely. Only the correct combination of suspect, room, and weapon result in the successful murder of me in winning the game. Uh, you, each individual needs must be achieved. And so now I offer you a toast to the winner. May the best murderer win. Raise your glasses to success. 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 Restive spirits roam all throughout the night. They search through every room, which one's right, which one will be my resting place tonight. What's the matter? The key's broken. It sounded fine up until a minute ago. I was playing around it. Well, continue playing around it. Walk through a door, dare to step through. 
truth lies inside Well hidden from view Knocks every room Will fit the bill One spot for death It's time To kill Laws and laws Are winding in its head A secret passageway Leads somewhere Each room so rare A true work of art With trapdoors in the floors And bookshelves that part Corridors and halls A mansion full of doom One of us must choose One corpse, one room Dining room chairs Move in the night Light switches off Light shining bright Behind someone is there. A winding in its stair, a secret passageway leads somewhere. Each room so rare, a true work of art with trapdoors in the floors and bookshelves that part. Corridors and halls, a mansion full of doom. One of us must choose one corpse, one room. The billiard room, where the portraits stare, and the walls all have ears. It could curl your hair. When the deed is complete this night, see the past come to life. What a sight! The library doors open by themselves. Hold out the book. so rude. You shouldn't have cheated me. You shouldn't have married my love. You shouldn't have swindled my family. You shouldn't have been so cheap.
Now I'm dead. My anticipated fatality is all in the line of duty, so please, no sympathy. Let's move ahead. Round one has ended and two shall now begin. There'll be three clues in this round to help you to advance you to a win. From what you've surmised, Sorry, from what you've witnessed, it's difficult to surmise the who, where, and how surrounding my demise. So to make your theorizing more effective, I offer you an expert, bona fide detective. I'm a hard-nosed detective who's hard-pressed to find the hard truth. I'm tough on crime, tough to talk to, and tough as nails. I turn over stones, turn over suspects, and turn over in my sleep. My direct questions get direct answers. For me, yes means yes, no means no, and maybe means you're under the influence of an illegal substance. <laughs> Peter Piper may have picked a pair of pickled peppers, and she may have sold seashells by the seashore, but everywhere that Mary went, this lamb won't be going. Is that clear? Me. Miss, there's been a murder. I know. What I do you mean, know. you know? I've searched the premises. Mr. Body's body is missing. And you all have horrendous looks of guilt on your faces. Oh, excuse me, but my plastic surgeon fixed that. <laughs> Why are you here? None of us called a detective. I'm supposed to be here. <laughs> You're not in the instructions. Who reads the instructions? We do. I bet you she's just a lost token from sorry. <laughs> <laughs> or better yet, she's a discarded token from life. <laughs> you better leave. Oh, yes, honey, this is not life. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Wrench, candlestick, pipe, knife, revolver, rope. That's better. Now, who here knew Mr. Body? Who here wanted a dead Mr. Body? This is quite. Nobody. Well, we will see. We shall. We shall what? Forget it. Now look here, detective. I want you to know here and now that I am not guilty. Because between you and me, murder is just too vulgar. <laughs> like your social life, I'm sure. <laughs> Colonel Mustard here. I like how you charged in and took control. Well, Together we'll find the killer. Together we'll solve the mystery. Together. Why do I have my arm around a bulldozer? Retreat, Colonel. Detective, certainly you don't think that I could have... How much do you want to drop the whole thing? I'm glad I don't have your nerve in my tooth. It certainly wasn't I. I get my jollies from crossword puzzles, not cold corpses. <laughs> That's not what I hear. <laughs> And don't look at me, detective, because I hate murder. <laughs> because you can't spell it. <laughs> I can so too. Prove it. M. O. I. D. That's enough! <sighs> you know, now that I look at you chumps in your wardrobe by Crayola, I doubt that any of you have the right stuff to be a murderer. Mr. Body's death was probably caused by natural causes. You know, dice failure, card trauma. Whatever, I think I'll be going. Just a minute. A murderer is a select individual. 
Someone with style. I breathe style. I've got a feeling all you breathe is fire. A killer is stout-hearted. Just call me Gibraltar. I don't waver. I don't flinch. I... Why is that gigantic string bean staring at me? <laughs> the mind that plots and executes a murder is an extraordinary one. Immense intelligence, it's superior IQ. <laughs> Consider me. Oh no, me. A killer requires creativity and passion. It's an art. I'm a true artist. I work with Minsky's mongrels. What did you do with the mongrels? I... Don't answer that. A killer is a sharp strategist. That's me. I'm sharp as a thimble. Detective, a killer is unique. I'm unique. You most certainly are, but let's stick to the matter of murder, shall we? Oh, very good, detective. What? Forget it. So, these little piggies are innocent, then these little piggies are not. Well, one of these little piggies is gonna cry wee 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 all the way home because I'm sticking around and I am going to figure this out. I suspect that each of you had a motive to kill Mr. Body and I'm going to want to question you. All of you. Hey honey, if you think you're looking at a killer, you better clean the wax out of your ears. Hey, 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 now I'm in charge here and I'm going to huff and I'm going to puff. I'm going to make sure that one of you gets life. <gasps> Behind bars? In the box. Now, my investigation formally begins. You are all suspects. Why are you staring at me? Detention and determined to deliver. If we play our cards wrong, we're really up the river. She is hard boiled, commandeering, quite attractive, and disarming. But the sight of prison stripes, it ain't so charming. Out is all this deadly thriller. But she can't even find the corpse, much less the killer. Premeditate our every move, eliminate the slightest clue. Chasing her tail from room to room, but simple strategy will see us through. Suspects and villains, no corpse yet, just chilling. We scared, so beware, alibis must compare. I didn't. He wasn't. She wouldn't. We couldn't. There's nothing that she can prove. And she hasn't got a clue. Could she have found out that I have? Does she know about the time? Has she found out? Would she have discovered that I found out? Could she have discovered that I Can she know? Suspects and villains, no corpse yet. Just chillin'. There are plenty of theories, there is plenty of blame. With the blues we can lose, it's a dark, deadly game. Did she? Does she? Has she? Would she? Could she? Can she? Dinner is
investigation now underway. I present to you the first clue to round number two. Focus on where the deed was executed when to calm my vigor was transmuted. The room which housed the deliberate act had libations mixed and strategies stacked. The suspects now learn that the detective is quite effective and far more clever than any of them ever thought she could be. So, you think I haven't got a clue? Well, I've got a lot more. This itsy bitsy spider crawled up more than a water spout. I've searched the entire mansion and found these. Six interesting items which I believe could have easily been used to commit the heinous crime with which I am faced with solving. I found a revolver in the ballroom, a wrench in the kitchen, a coil of rope in the lounge, a candlestick in the billiard room, a knife in the conservatory, and a lead pipe in the study. With my highly advanced laptop crime detection system, I was able to ascertain that all of your fingerprints appear on all the items and that the prints were made between 9 p.m. and the precise moment of Mr. Body's death. Midnight! Don't go any further. I maintain my innocence. Therefore, I shall admit of my own free will that I did indeed handle three of those weapons mentioned, but not for the grisly crime of murder. After dinner at 9.02, I handled the candlestick. When I saw it lying on its side in the library, I stood it upright. At 9-11, I handled the revolver. When I took it out of its display case in the, in the study, merely to um, inspect its caliber. Huh. <laughs> then at 9-20, I handled the knife in the kitchen when I used it to cut the rot out of the apple I was eating. Those weapons weren't found in those rooms. Well, I was responsible for moving two of them. At 9-11, before retiring to my chambers, I saw Professor Plum handling the revolver, and I got suspicious. So I waited till he went into the kitchen, and at 9-22, I moved it to a place where anyone with questionable motive could not find it, the conservatory, behind a lovely Wisniewski fern. At 9-30, I used the knife in the kitchen and moved it to the lounge to cut a twist for my martini. You handled no others? Well, I did retrieve the wrench from the tool shed I, to give it to the big burly handyman who needed it in the kitchen to work on a pipe, a lead pipe. It didn't stay there, though. At 9.44, I saw Mrs. White retrieve it. Huh. Well, I needed it to get the top off me bottle of spirits while I hide in the study. Then at 9.50, I went to the lounge to finish me spirits like a proper lady. And that's when I found this here piece of rope, which I lost on my way to the conservatory. Conservatory? Yeah, to talk to the plants. I found the rope in the lounge at 9.58. Mrs. Peacock promised we'd play cowboys and Indians. <laughs> and you can't play cowboys and Indians without a rope. You most certainly can't. I used the lead pipe to crack open a can of rations. You still eat that stuff? Rations stay with you forever. <laughs> now at 10.30, I took the wrench to the ballroom to give it to the handyman. Well, he needed it to fix a radiator. That handyman is quite popular, huh, ladies? At 10.40, I took him the knife to the lounge. So we could cut his bologna sandwich. More popular than I thought. Is that it? No. At 9.50, I moved the candlestick into the study for some night reading. <laughs> then I took it into the conservatory for some atmosphere. Uh, 10.55. I carried it to the billiard room to experiment with playing pool. 11. I carried it to the ballroom to catch the view from the balcony. 11.05. I took it to the lounge for... Romantic rendezvous with Mrs. Peacock, 11.10. And I to the kitchen for a late night snack, 11.15. I took the revolver out of the conservatory, 11.20. And I hid it in the billiard room, 22. I carried it to the ballroom, 24. I took it in the kitchen, 26. I had it in the study, 28. And I in the lounge, 30. 
The rope. To the billiard room. The conservatory. The study. The ballroom. The lounge. Red. Kitchen. Billiard room. Study. Ballroom. Lounge. Nap. Billiard room. Ballroom. Lounge. Hey, kitchen. Study. Lounge. Rope. Nope. Conservatory. Lounge. Rope. Wrench. Study. Lounge. Candlestick. Lounge. Revolver. Lounge. Rope. Lounge. Knife. Lounge. Pipe. Lounge. Wrench. Lounge. Candlestick. Lounge. Pipe. Lounge. Knife. Revolver. Rope. Wrench. Candlestick. Pipe. Knife. Revolver. Rope. Wrench. Candlestick. Pipe. Knife. Revolver. Rope. Everyday devices have enterprising uses when they're in the right hands. But for the wrong reasons, delightfully delicious is dangerous. Abuses when they're in the right, in the right, in the right, hands are right, in the right, in the right. Hands, wrench and pipe, pipe and rope, everyone's a glue with any whistly gadget. You people act like you're out of a board game. Well, we'll say that it later. This jack is still at the top of the beanstalk, and I've got something else on you. This note, made from magazine cutouts. And it reads, it's my turn. Hmm. I'm convinced now more than ever that one of you is guilty of murder, and I am gonna find that person. <laughs> I'll be interrogating all of you shortly. Stop staring at me! She is so frazzled. Serious. Charged. Shrewd. Tacky. Attractive. <laughs> Information is essential. I now present to you the second clue to round number two. Focus on how the deed was completed when I, with all glory, was fatally defeated. The weapon responsible for killing me, the world's fastest feet could never flee. Now we go to the library. Here the detective continues her interrogation. The suspect's distressed with each accusation. She's alert, bold, cunning, and curt. They jockey desperately for vindication. Professor Plum, tell me, could a savvy person such as yourself commit the crime of murder simply because his family's oil business was betrayed? Could I? Yes. Did I? <laughs> I read your book on corruptions in the CIA. Rather enjoyed it. You look different from the photo on the book jacket. Well, a film can never capture exact likeness. Very different. I read somewhere that you were now in South America working on a book about Let me give you a bit of advice, oh. my sharp detective. A sophisticated criminal act is best deduced with patience, astute reasoning, and cocktails for two. What do you say you join me for a drink? I've got a murder to solve. Come on, let two masterminds spend stimulating conversation. Stimulation is not in my job description. Do as the great minds of ages past would. Imbibe with me. Converse with me. Fertilize my cerebral gardens. I gave up fertilizing cerebral gardens when my shrink told me that fertilizing rose gardens was a healthier choice for a bipolar codependent who regresses to a child for emotional support. As Somerset Mom said, the mind is most free when the body is satiated with pleasure. As Emerson said, the eye of prudence may never shut. The awful thing about most people is their caution, Thomas Wolfe. He has not desire for that which he feels no want, Euripides. The only way to get rid of temptation is to yield to it, Oscar Wilde. I desire only to know the truth, Euripides. Beauty is truth, truth, beauty. 
That is all you need to know. Keats. Let one be on guard against those who flatter and mislead. Aristotle. Make yourself necessary to somebody. Emerson. Be not simply good. Be good for something. Thoreau. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh? <laughs> Criminal propensities and calculated risks. Moat of opportunity, poison and plot twists. Made for primetime thrillers, crimes of passion, alibis. Blood and guts. But in the news of murder flies, it's normal curiosity to thrill at the notion of engaging in foul play. But in civilized society, we stifle that emotion in fear of judgment day. Tell the truth You're seduced by my theory Your career fills a need deep within Mischief fills the minds of more than killers You're bewitched by the deadly scent of sin I enjoy amassing modus operandi I'm entranced by exploring brutal Yes, the criminal's confession's captivating, but not compared to dissecting maniacs. Criminal propensities and calculated risks, motive opportunity, poison and plot twists, made for prime time thrillers, crimes of passion, alibis. We're consumed by blood and guts, but in the news of murder flies. Thoreau, don't be too moral. You may cheat yourself out of much life, Aristotle, if he has not virtue. He is the most savage of all animals. Yes! <sighs> Tell the truth. You're seduced by my theory. Your career fills a need deep within. Mischief fills the minds of more than killers. You're bewitched by the deadly scent of sin. The design of the game is not merely to entertain. It's coming in for the kill. That excites me. We're seduced by the challenge, then reduced to the chase. On the heels of hot pursuit to prosecute, to execute. And open and shut case. No more questions. Colonel Mustard. You certainly have an appetite for murder. When Mr. Body's father passed legislation banning you from the military, you offed him. <laughs> no, I went off with him. To a remote village in Honduras where he was slaughtered during tribal ritual and fed to the gods. Then you married Mr. Body's mother, who weeks later was found dead with the noose around her neck. In cowboys and Indians, the rules stipulate that the loser must hang themselves. I didn't think she'd take me seriously. In her will, she left you the house. There was nothing Mr. Body could do about this. The inheritance was yours, legally. But a betrothed Mrs. Peacock you could never claim. So, it was your turn. You killed Mr. Body because he married his one true love to avenge you. For the death of his parents? For owning his home? No! Because when he was a child, you convinced him that he was a toaster. All these medals on my chest made this soldier, you see. I know you must be impressed. I see how you look at me. I'll trade you all this glory if you change your story. Vindicate me, exonerate me, allies in the battle, it's war! Mr. 
green. <laughs> You're a conniver. You're a chauvinist. You're a snake. Nah. I'm a Democrat. <laughs> you are a business partner of Mr. Body's in several ventures. With the one in Vegas, he swindled you out of a bundle. Hey, you know, that's the way the cookie bounces. <laughs> With colossal nips and tucks, the roles were reversed. You were duping him out of hundreds of thousands of dollars. He found out, threatened you, you killed him. Look, that money was mine. And I know, because I never count my chickens before they cross the sidewalk. <laughs> and honey, let me tell you another thing. If you think you're looking at a killer, it's like trying to fit a round peg into a bread box. Cheats <laughs> and thieves, blue collar crime. That's just nickel and dime. Check my collar, green's my game. Nothing but the big time. I've been round the block twice. Not afraid to cast dice. Come on, honey, take my money. Bribing and conniving's my way. Here we go, ladies. You first. So your real name, Scarletta Vermicelli. <laughs> I'll have mine al dente. <laughs> Get it? Al dente vermicelli. You hooked up with Mr. Body in Vegas. He used you to extort money from a business you, he, and Mr. Green had. <laughs> then he dumped you. That Bum proposed marriage and everything. Did that betrayal spur your revenge here and now? Was it your turn? Did you kill him? I got my revenge in Vegas. Of course you did. I caught Mr. Body at the airport and I dragged him back to town. And tortured him? Yes. Oh, I made him sit through Jessica Simpson's nightclub act. Oh, wow. <laughs> And applaud. Mrs. White, sit. Mrs. White, did you kill Mr. Body to erase your son Nigel's debt? No. No, you killed him because he was driving you like a slave. It was your turn, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. White, what are you hiding? <laughs> Whatever it is, it's well hidden. Mr. Body's death was caused by a blow to the head, which it may have been. The killer would have had to be tall. How tall are you, Mrs. White? Five foot eight. With heels? With anyone. Mrs. Peacock. <clears throat> Tell me, before Mr. Body, how many husbands have you had? Mine or other women's? <laughs> Yours? Five. Five? Yes, just five. I believe men should be like tissues, soft, strong, and disposable. <laughs> Mrs. Peacock, you lure men to your web like spiders with flies. Well, flies are where men are most vulnerable. Five husbands, five questionable deaths, five fortunes now yours. And according to the fine print your attorneys added to Mr. Body's will upon his passing, you now inherit his entire estate. 
Remember something, detective. With an attorney who makes more an hour than you do in a week, it's always my turn. Silver bullets with your name. She's malicious, two-faced to the end. All is fair in love and war. Murder settles the score. Six of us could walk scot free. We could offer you more. We should stick together, comrades in foul weather. Please don't sell us down the river, growing up without an She's malicious, two-faced to the end. Stick together in foul weather, my foul weather friend. Ladies and gentlemen, I now present to you the final clue to round number two. The game continues, not yet complete. Deducing the answer, no easy feat. The suspect you should scrutinize had insightful moves and curious eyes. Well, 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 well. Grub a dub dub six suspects in a tub full of hot water. Your secrets are all out in the open. I could pin this murder rap on any one of you if I wanted, but only one of you did it. And I've got proof. Was it Mrs. White in the ballroom with the candlestick? Or Mrs. Peacock in the billiard room with the knife? Or Colonel Mustard in the lab library with the pistol. Mr. Green, Miss Scarlet, run. Yeah, run fast. Jack be nimble, Jack be quick, but Jack can't outrun this maverick. <laughs> Green means you're full of envy. Scarlet shows a jealous streak. The colors are the motive for two killers cheek to cheek. Your assumptions are insane. We're as clean as yellow snow. Love the one that's tall enough to strike the fatal blow. For a buck, you've lost your luck. For your son, you pass a gun. For lost love, you'll go to jail. Yo, here's five bucks towards your bail. It's all my fault you're in this mess. I crave the chance to die. The joy of immortality and corpus delicti. You both conspire to kill and your two lovers with the scheme. Illicit assignations, you're the perfect murder team. Don't blind me, she's in the wheel. Don't frame me, you fit the bill. And you'll hang high when I testify. Aye, it's me they're gonna fry. A coffee's to a killer But a killer hangs himself Then straight from the cook and I love thy neighbor, neighbor as thyself It's all your fault you're in this mess But soon you'll pay your dues Excuse me, Mr. Green, could those be Bruno Molly's shoes? My desire, it's check out time I demise the perfect crime Toss, Toss the, the dice, the final roll Roll, but no hope of a roll it's all your fault, we're in this mess, we're sorry that you came So next time play Pachisi, please just find another game 
now make your accusations and be sure the clues are fixed. For if there is a shred of doubt, you know you mustn't win. Deliberate, don't speculate. Complete your form. The time is now. You must select who, where, and how. Duck. Soon one of you will be behind a lock and key and bars with no windows and bad food and guards. <laughs> mean guards. Stare at me all you like. I'll be back for you shortly. She's a master of detection and determined to deliver. She's uncovered every clue that we have given her. All the pieces fit together. Now the suspects wonder whether we're off to a prison pen. Birds of a feather. We're all behind the eight ball now. She has us cornered like a rat. She claims she knows who, where, and how. Every alibi has fallen flat. We're out of room. has won the game, whose answer in ours is one and the same. Please stand. No winners. One winner. There we go. Give him a round of applause, please. Not so fast. <laughs> Professor Plum did it all right. Well, sort of. He certainly had motive to want Mr. Body dead but he was just the accomplice. The real killer is Professor Plum. <laughs> you're mad. Oh, no, I'm not. And you are not Professor Plum. You're no internationally renowned author. You're no PhD. You're no MA. You're barely a BA. You're a dorky school teacher from Springfield, Massachusetts, who came here disguised as Professor Plum because you had a bone to pick with Mr. Body. He drove the businesses which funded your private school out of business. With no money, your school closed, and you lost your job as head of the PTA. PTA, not Plum Transatlantic, Parent 
Teachers Association. <laughs> but you didn't kill him. You're too much of a wimp. Anyone who seduces a woman with Thoreau is a wimp. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the real murder scenario was this. The real Professor Plum killed Mr. Body because he constantly demoted him from prime time player in the game to secondary suspect to mere spectator and then to the most demeaning of all positions. <laughs> Piano player! <laughs> Mr. Body would not acknowledge that I could play the game just as well as the others, that I had a real <laughs> talent for murder. So I had to show him. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. It was my turn. I did it in the lounge with the revolver, and that imposter was my accomplice. <laughs> he supplied me with weapons and made sure that there were no witnesses. <laughs> How did you get me? There were three crucial bits of evidence. The first, linked you to the accomplice, the sheet music. The second provided a motive for murder, the note made of magazine cutouts, and the clue that told me it was you and only you, the broken piano key. <laughs> told you I'd solve it. <laughs> smarter than I thought. Hey, 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 where, where, where are you going? This game is too complex and dangerous. I'm off to play another one. No maladjusted psychopaths, no intricate plots, no murder. Just railroads and hotels. Monopoly! <laughs> 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 You know, her idea is a good one. I wouldn't mind getting out of here and spending some time in Palm Beach. I think I'll give Donald Trump a call and see if his offer is still good. I would like to find myself in a more erudite setting. A Tony Kushner play, a John Foles novel, where it be in a more complex plot with an enlightened theme and characters of depth. Yeah, I could see myself out of this tired old mansion and into something significant and deep, too. <laughs> like a Twilight movie. I'll rise through the ranks to become a global leader. A beacon of hope for the masses. I'll see a new world order. I'll see a break tomorrow. I'll see a chiropractor. A holiday to me homeland aboard the Queen Mary. <laughs> Six days sailing across the Atlantic with Onky Stewart's tending me every need. <laughs> and I do mean every need. You know, I could actually see myself taking a nice Caribbean cruise to the Greek islands. Wrench, candlestick, pipe, knife, revolver, rope. Wrench, candlestick, pipe, knife, revolver, rope. You see, some things must remain the same. The game has been played. It is over this merry escapade. Until such time as we lift the cover and sift through clues to discover the mystery source from whence it came. Now you played a little game of murder, a little game of murder. You tried your best to play the game to win.